Hi folks, Robert here again with more Rivet training. We're going to continue on with our uh, scheduling and our framing and parts and assemblies. Okay, so in this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, modify an assembly parts list. So the first thing we want to do, we want to go into our project browser and scroll all the way down to our assemblies, which are here. This is when you have an assembly set up, and let's just select the part list here. And once we have that part list selected, we'll go over into our properties and we'll select edit. Okay, once we have edit selected, uh, we want to move this around. Let's, so let's just fix our fields here. We don't need that. That. Uh, I think we do need count, so we'll move the count up. We don't need uh, family and family type. And we don't need, well, we don't need category. We'll keep description here. So that's all we want to see there. So now from this point on, we want to just add a parameter here. And then what we do from that point, we'll, um, We'll enable, we'll enable structural framing. So we'll just select structural framing right here. And then we'll call this parameter cut length. Okay. And it'll be a type parameter, it'll be length, and it'll be under dimensions. And then we'll say OK. Yep. So then once again, we'll uh, go here and we'll add another parameter. It'll be on the structural framing as well. And it'll be an instance. And this one we'll call material. And that'll be this one will be common under this will be a material type parameter. So we'll go down to material here, and it's grouped under material finishes, and that's all we need right there. So moving on here, we'll go and select our field again. Okay, I'm sorry. We got to say OK here. And then we've got our fill, so we have material there. So now we want to select our calculated value right here. Well, we have that selected. So here, we want to key in weight. We went through this earlier in the earlier exercise. Good practice with this for the gain weight. We'll set this to number tag us the number and then we'll just select our this little button here build a button and once we have that we want to select cut and hit OK cut length and from the cut length we want to add this formula in the formula field or we want to say slash one times 490 now this formula calculates pounds units. Okay, so if you want to me uh, uh, measure tons? You just say one times a thousand. So here we'll go and just say okay. Or well, you can use whatever units uh, you ever working with, basically. And then we'll say okay here. Now. 
Now let's go and verify. We got count, mark, description, cut link, material, and weight. We're good there. So now let's move on to our sorting and grouping tab. And under sorting and grouping, you want to select sort by mark. Okay. And it will be ascending. Next, we'll select formatting. And under formatting, We want to highlight count. Okay. And then once we have that highlighted, we want to just change this to QTY. This is going to be our quantity. And we're going to uh, align this to the center of the header. Okay. Next. We'll go down and we'll highlight mark. And under mark, we'll just set the alignment to center. Set that to center. Now, after we highlight our mark, we want to go and highlight our cut length. Now here in cut length, we want to select our field format here. And now in our field format, we want to disable this project, use project settings. And we want to round this to the near 16th of an inch. Okay, next we're going to go and highlight our and then we'll say okay here. Then we want to highlight our material. So when we select our material, we want to change the heading here to steel, steel grade. And we want to align this to the center as well. So all that should be there done. And then next we want to highlight our weight. And we want to change the uh, heading here to weight. And then we'll just say pounds here, LBS. So that's what our value is going to be. It's going to be in pounds. We're going to get that calculated by using that formula we just placed in. Okay, now on the weight, we go and select our format field with weight selected. We want to uncheck the default settings. And we want to set the units to fixed. Now these units are set as fixed and we want to move these one decimal place. And we'll click OK. Now let's go to our appearance tab. And here we want to just say uh, we want to have grid lines. We'll take outlines. We'll say grid and headers. We'll take that one. And we'll also go down below and we'll, we'll show a title, show headers, and then here on the text, for the text, let's go with, uh, for the header, let's just make it a little bigger. Let's make it a quarter inch. Now that'll be our title. And let's make our header text an eighth inch and our body text an eighth inch as well. And then we'll click OK. So now let's go and preview and see what our, our list looks like. Just double click here. And so there's our, that's the, the beginning of our schedule. Now uh, there's a lot of information missing, but we can fix that. So let's just shut this down for the moment.
and let's uh, activate a 3D view under the assemblies. So let's activate this 3D assembly view, and there's our assembly. As you can see, it's, it's, it's an assembly, it's all one element. So uh, what we want to do now is um, we want to select the assembly so it highlights. And it's, yeah. So the assembly is highlighted. And then we want to go up here on the modify assemblies and we want to hit edit assembly. And you know you got it because it turns this green color. So let's select this end member right here. And now we have that end member selected. So let's scroll down over in our properties dialog box here. I can pull it up, we can see what's going on there. And if we scroll down, we'll see the mark at C2, C2A. Now here, we want to dis... Yeah. So under the dimensions, we see that cut length there. We want to we wanna take that cut length We want to add this value. There is that. There. We want to take this value and just bring it right here so it'll show up in our schedule. So we got, okay, number 116. Space. Nope. Sorry. Nope. We want to make this 16. Let's just do it. By this way, 16, no, 18, sorry, 16 space 8 space 253 over 256. We'll click apply. And there you see that value popped up there. Now, in the material, we can go ahead to the material and let's go. Oh, sorry, wrong one. We'll select. So, where's our structural material? There it is. We want to select this and hit this little builder block. And we want to call this steel, if it ever comes up. Come on. There it is. So let's just type in steel here. Let's spell it right. And we'll take this ASTM 992 and click OK. So there's our steel there. Now Let's select edit type. You just want to edit the type here now. And under edit type, under the description, we want to call this as a W12 by 26. Just make that a capital W. Just for that, W12 by 26, and we'll click OK. Now, let's select the middle beam, and here we'll do basically the same thing. Let's take the material. We want to make this, it should remember, it's, yep, it's still there. We want to go OK here for the STM. Let's just move this out so we can see what's happening here. OK, there we go. Now, the cut length, same as before, on the dimension. Our cut length is 16 feet by 45. So let's just go right here and go 16 space, 5 space. 45 over 
256 and click apply. And there's our next link. So now let's select this end bar. And basically we want to do the same thing here for the material. It still remembers still, which is good. Okay. And now uh, we want to take this cut length again, which is 16 feet, 1 foot, and 47 over 128. We'll click apply. And then you'll notice that this is C2C. Now, once we have that done, let's click anywhere in the screen. And then we'll go up to our edit assembly and we'll click finish assembly. And so there's our assembly. Now, let's go and take another look at uh, our schedule. So we got all that information filled in, which is what we want. That's good. Now, let's close this down and finish this thing up, folks. So we have this all ready to go. So now, um, in our properties, select this. Now, over in our properties, uh, for our view name, Let's name this view. Let's rename our view here to C2 members. We'll say apply here. Okay, now let's go to our C1 and 2. Highlight this. Let's right click on C1 and 2 and let's create assembly views. So now there's all our assembly views that's available to us. So now what we do here is we'll just select this one and select none. And let's go and set this scale to three quarters of an inch equals one foot. And uh, we want to select, we want to enable our sheet. And we want to use here this B11 by 17. And let's say OK. And so there's our sheet. Now, all we do from here is just drag and drop. So let's go into our detail plan view. Mm -hmm. Well, not that one. That's not the one we want to select here. We created that sheet already. So the C3 members. So let's go to our detail plan. This one right here. And let's just drag and drop him right there. And that should be three quarters of an inch. I goofed up somewhere. But I'm sure somebody will let me know what I did wrong. And then we'll go and add our C2 members part list. So 
So there you have it, folks. We made a few little errors in here, but I think you can figure out, go back and look at where I messed up. But that's how you create a work with assemblies and how you basically uh, modify an assembly part list. This is uh, within Revit. So this is, I mean, you can do assemblies. Just about everything you can do in a regular Revit environment. You can schedule different sheets and everything so anyway folks um, thank you for watching this video if you have any questions or comments uh, please put it in the comment section uh, like this helps me out a lot and also subscribe so there you have it we just created a uh, assembly part list and we modified the assembly parts so thanks for watching this video uh, until next time bye